England squad will be filled via a full draft. West Indies opener Chris Gale and Australia batsman Steve Smith are among those to have made themselves available for the tournament. And in the women's tournament, London Spirit chose England captain Heather Knight and Sussex bowler Freya Davis, while Oval Invincibles chose Kent players Laura Marsh and Fran Wilson. Mm. Tell me a little bit about how did you feel about Dina Rashid Smith? Because she's won a, a global sprint medal for women. I can't remember uh, uh, when that was uh, last done. She's hugely charismatic, hugely intelligent, and fantastically talented. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the word charismatic really springs to mind because I've got an older daughter, or my eldest daughter is three, and she wanted to watch. and. You could say, yeah, okay, she wanted to watch because she wanted to stay up late. But I think that is the uh, the big positive. She is a superstar, Eddie, and I think there's still more to come. We've heard from uh, Jessica Ennis-Hill saying that there's still much more to come. She really is the real deal, but not just what she does when she's out competing. It's as much as what she does off the track. She's a real bright young lady and absolutely delighted to, uh, to see her earning all this uh, deserved success. Yeah, and you know, it, it's kind of a little bit moving for me because I'm watching it and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, wow. And then I, I'm looking at Jeanette. Uh, how proud are we of her? Absolutely delighted for Jeanette because there's no fantastic. no nicer person in broadcasting and we know that when she was on the track she did the business but now she's the other side and the one thing I really really love about Jeanette she is running every single stride with them and she really is uh, well charismatic as well a legend I love it love watching her love watching uh, Dina compete brilliant it's a good feeling good feeling well done mate. Digital Radio 94 point It's gold for Britain She won't be here this Friday, I don't think. Uh, she's uh, happy to get my last out of my show on the Friday to some of these lovely. So uh, she'll be on. Uh, let's see how long we can keep her show. <laughs> she, you better listen to her. My guess is she won't be on BBC Radio London for very long. Uh, now, we've been trying to get this lady on for uh, uh, actually since three minutes past the hour, five o'clock. It's 17.39, finally we've got uh, Joanne Welsh's campaign director for uh, backto60.com. Uh, Joe, I, I, I'm guessing you, your phone has been quite warm this afternoon. <laughs> These keys this is to your house. Huh? Keep your hands where I can see. Shop keys. Shop keys. Right, they've just given me the okay to actually go into the shop, so I'm just gonna step through the door here. Looks like the um the man they've arrested is just in the corner, not in handcuffs or anything. He's speaking to the officials now. They're putting phones into clear plastic evidence bags. Generally, they're just searching the store, so I can see a couple of the guys here stood behind the till. Looks like they're going through the books. It's completely normal looking news agents, really. You wouldn't tell anything else was happening here apart from selling sweets and magazines and, and newspapers. of searching the suspect has now been led away put in a car in handcuffs and he's been taken to a police station and i'm now joined by david fairclough the deputy director of immigration enforcement from the uh, lbc undercover operation that has identified as being the recipient of seven thousand pounds it was due to pay for um, a migrant to be smuggled from northern france into the uk by the south coast on a small boat. How seriously do you take their activities, the way they are smuggling people into this country? The tackling of these small boat uh, people smuggling gangs is our number one priority. Um, I would say that this is the most dangerous threat to life that I see in terms of people smuggling at the moment. We're seeing on a daily basis small boats uh, overcrowded by 100, 150 percent 
the perilous uh, coming across the busiest shipping lane in the world. We've had two fatalities that we know of, and I think more will arise if we don't get on top of this particular problem and stop those boats crossing. That's David Fairclough of Immigration Enforcement ending Rachel Venable's report. You can see the raid that Rachel just reported on on the LBC website, lbc.co.uk. As we've discussed, the DUP and others in Northern Ireland are very keen when it comes to trade for Northern Ireland to be no different from the rest of the UK. But when it comes to abortion, the law in Northern Ireland is very different. An abortion is permitted only if a woman's life is deemed to be at risk or if there's a risk of permanent and serious damage to her mental or physical health. Today at the High Court in Belfast, a ruling that the law breaches the UK's human rights commitment. Sarah Hewitt brought the case. The court ruled in her favour, saying it was not right to ask another woman to relive the trauma she had experienced. Gronje Tackett is the Northern Ireland Campaigns Manager for Amnesty International UK. Uh, you'll be pleased about the judgment, I'm sure. Are you surprised that it went your way? Oh, no, we're not surprised. Um, today's case follows on from a Supreme Court judgment last year, which confirmed that the law here violates rights, but it would require a victim to bring the case forward, which is why we then brought the case back to Belfast High Court with Sarah. But no doubt today is a groundbreaking ruling. It is a huge win for abortion rights in Northern Ireland. The court has spoken loud and clear that the current abortion law is a clear violation of our human rights, so today is a very welcome development. Does this change anything today for women in Northern Ireland? No, today really um, mounts pressure on government to deliver um, very timely transition to free, safe, legal and local abortion services following the UK Parliament legislating early this year. So on the 21st of October, provided that our devolved government stormant does not return, um, a new law will take effect which will finally bring to an end our near total abortion ban. It's a curious situation for uh, people on your side of the argument to be in, isn't it? Hoping that Stormont doesn't return, which is what many people have been hoping for for more than 900 days. It is, absolutely. I mean, our first preference was always that a devolved legislator would have dealt with this matter. Regrettably, they failed to do so, whilst, you know, countless women continue to tra travel and were being harmed by our existing regime. So the UK Parliament, in recognition of the harm by the current law, uh, legislated for change. And what it means is that abortion will be decriminalised here and made lawful, including in cases where there is a risk to the woman's health, in cases of sexual crime and where there's a serious or fatal malformation with the fetus. Are you concerned that because of the slightly uh, unusual uh, way that this has come about in terms of the, the passing of the legislation, that uh, when the day comes that Stormont returns, that maybe somehow the Assembly would find a way of uh, questioning, if not overturning this? Well, if Stormont returns before the 21st of October, we are back to square one. We'll have to then fight through Stormont to bring about long overdue change. But if and when Stormont does return and this new law has taken effect, i.e. after the date of the 21st of October, they would have to legislate to undo this law. And I simply don't think that would pass because people recognise that the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland have wanted this change. And more than that, that women here need this change. It is wrong that we have been exporting their health care. Good to hear from you. Thank you. Gronje Taggart, Northern Ireland Campaigns Manager for Amnesty International UK. We'll have more in just a moment on that uh, decision in the past half hour uh, in uh, uh, Scotland's uh, Parliament to stop the smacking of children. Plus